Good morning. Last time I explained to you how to create a motion lapse by using the automatic generating video feature in your Pocket 2. Today I'm going to show you the more advanced workflow by using uh, the photo feature direct after the intro. So let's start the intro. The major advantage to use that advanced way is you get more control about your image and increase your editing capabilities. Then the automatic generated video is only in HD. With that way you will get a real 4K result. But for sure it takes more time because uh, you need to put more effort on your post-production and you need um, additional uh, photo editing tool like Lightroom, Lumina or something similar. Now I'm going to show you the entire workflow. Uh, first walk through the Pocket 2 settings. Uh, then I'm going to show you uh, some adjustments in Lightroom and finally uh, put it into my timeline in DaVinci Resolve and do some additional improvements. Let's walk fast through the settings. As explained in the last video, swipe to the left, swip, swipe up, choose time lapse, time lapse, and then you can choose motion lapse or time lapse in both of these settings. Um, um, yeah, you can use this advanced workflow, then as explained in my last video, you see the whole duration of shooting, the final result in seconds and how, um, yeah, the interval uh, you take a shot. All four seconds you take a shot. In this um, yeah, final settings of what I'm going to show you now, uh, four seconds is um, the smallest or the minimum interval you can choose uh, because it takes a little bit time uh, to generate um, the pictures. And that's uh, the, the final setting. It's a different uh, last time we use video only. And today we're going to use video and raw to get more possibilities in editing later. And that will be the next step on your computer. Uh, you will find the normal uh, automatic generated video in, in the media folder and then uh, it will generate an additional folder called time lapse and there you find all your pictures. You grab all the pictures, put it somewhere on your hard drive and then you will import it into your favorite picture editing software. In my case, it's Lightroom. You can use Lumina. You can use Affinity Photo. What you prefer, uh, I guess the most of the modern photo editing software can do that. It's maybe a little bit a different way, but let's jump into Lightroom now. And now we are in Lightroom. I already imported all the pictures. Uh, and so now let's start with editing. If somebody wants to learn more about using Lightroom, please write it in the comment section down below. So, and in that case, I had prepared this first shot. You can see already prepared. That's the second shot. Uh, that's out of the pocket too. And the first one is already editing, edited. And let's walk through my settings I made to achieve that result. So first things first, I use the normal color profile then the temperature, it's more the cold one, 5000 
250 Kelvin and just a little bit of tint plus two. Then I go down with the lights rapidly minus 85. Bring up the depth to get more detail into that area uh, up to just 40 and then I uh, found my white point to get more dynamic into this shot so between the white and the black areas and last but not least uh, the absolutely black areas the darkest areas uh, in your shot make it a little bit higher as well so put more clarity on it plus plus 10 a little bit of dynamic and a little bit of saturation additionally then in graduation the normal s curve a little bit more high lights and down the low lights and don't uh, fade it at, at the end i i want to use a clear normal black point in that case then go to the next step to our hsl table i switched a little bit the hue of the colors uh, bring the greens uh, hue more into the yellow one aquamarine more into uh, to blue to become a more natural look in my sky it turns a little bit too much into aquamarine and therefore I work against that and brings the aquamarines more to, to blue all other U areas blue and the other ones it's zero it's default on the setting uh, saturation bring much more saturation into my reds because it's a sunrise picture bring the saturation of green a little bit down and put more saturation into my sky yeah bring more situ uh, saturation into the sun with red and orange and bring more saturation into the sky with aquamarine and blue and in the luminance i go uh, opposite the opposite way to yeah to increase the effect of desaturation you can bring up the luminance of a color that looks more desaturated and if you want to uh, if you want that the color is looks more saturated you can bring down the luminance but just a little bit it's very powerful and your image breaks very fast just a little bit as you can see it's around 10 plus 10 and minus 10 and not more let's check uh, what the effect hope you will see it how it changed the whole picture yeah it get much more intensive do much more intensive and the uh, sunrise and uh, yeah that's because bring the saturation up and bring the luminance down to get more uh, color contrast okay next color grading i did did nothing a little bit of sharpening it's up to you in that i don't want one to use sharpening it should be more smooth the whole uh, picture noise reduction a little bit for luminance and a little bit little bit of color then let's check what i did in the effects area just a little little vignette put a just a little little vignette on it and 
put a little bit of grain and in calibration I did just a little bit bring the reds more into the red it makes an impact on, on the sunrise and bring the saturation a little bit makes it a little bit more high and the tint or the dark areas uh, against the greenish a little bit out yeah that's 10 so that's the whole adjustment and now i want to show you how you can put it on all your pictures it's quite simple hit copy the interface pops up make sure all the settings will be copied you you edit so in that case it works hit copy then go to your pictures mark every every picture right click go to settings and paste settings yeah, it takes a little bit of time but now it's done you can see it works it's done Next, mark every single or every pictures. Go to export, choose the folder. In my case, in my project folder called time lapse. Okay, choose the folder. Uh, then it's important, yeah, give it a name. It's important to choose sequence. It needs to be a sequence uh, of pictures in my case one two three four five and and so on you can start wherever you want 100 200 but it needs to be one after each other yeah. so then you can see it's in 4k and now you can hit export the export is starting and that takes a little bit of time because yeah it's a lot of pictures to export see you next in davinci resolve for the final step. I already put the image sequence into my media library of DaVinci Resolve and it recognizes that automatically and generates a video. Other editing programs such as Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Power Director and so on, they can also do this. You need to take a look how it works, but basically it works. So now just drag drag it onto your timeline you can see generates automatically a video now you can go further and improve it a little bit by adding additional effects for example a small Ken Burns effect let's say and okay, I guess that will be fine. Yeah, see, with additional approve, really easy, really fast to generate. And if you want to learn more about additional effects on time lapse, please write a comment. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like that, please write a comment of what you want to see. And if you enjoyed that video, you can hit any button down below, except the dislike. It doesn't hurt you. That's the truth. I swear.